Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be studying 1991 USAMO problem number 1. Here's a view of this problem. We are given a triangle ABC where angle A is twice the size of angle B and angle C is an obtuse angle. Um, and the three side lengths ABC are all integer lengths. We need to determine with a proof the minimum possible perimeter. So let's go ahead and draw a sketch like this. So this is side length A, B, and C. We are given that A, B, C are integers, positive integers, I assume. And we also know that angle A measures twice angle B. So what I will do is I will just, let's just call angle B as theta here. And a key move here in this solution would be to draw this angle bisector here and as a result this angle over here is theta and this is also theta because we already know A is just two times angle B but that gives us a beautiful um, uh, isosceles triangle here where um, well obviously you have a bunch of similarities. The one that uh, benefits our purposes here in this case would be triangle ADC being similar to triangle BAC by angle 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 uh, similarity. So as a result what I will do is using this similarity I can establish that for example AD over AB here uh, uh, would be equal to um, or let, let's just write the, uh, so, AD over AB equals, is equal to AC over BC. As a result, uh, plugging in the givens in the problem, we realize that AD is simply equal to B times C over A. And also what we can do is, so that's our first result, a second observation is uh, the fact that we can make use of this angle BAC being uh, being split into two. The angle bisector theorem here, angle bisector theorem, theorem simply implies that um, that um, let's call this point as D here. So therefore, let's move that A a little bit lower here, like this. A is the whole thing, obviously. Huh? So A is the whole measurement of the whole length BC here. So using angle bisector theorem, I can say AB to BD. AB to BD is actually equal to AC to CD. AC to CD. Making use of this would imply that BD is equal to AB times CD over AC and so that's simply equal to A times C over B plus C. Now finally um, we also know that obviously triangle ABD is isosceles so, and as a result this would imply that AD is equal to BD and then if we substitute these uh, results that we earlier found that can equivalently be represented as um, BC over A, that's AD, is equal to AC over B plus C. And finally, that will give us our, uh, um, our result that A square is equal to um, B plus, so the C's here will cancel, B uh, times B plus C. Um, let me open a new page and write that down in that new page. So I just carried what we got the result from the previous page to here. Now a couple of uh, observations are in order. So first of all, uh, notice that the greatest common divisor between A, B, C must be equal to 1. Otherwise, you can imagine that we can form a triangle by dividing A, B, C uh, with their greatest common divisor and we can get a, a, a new triangle with smaller integer side lengths and that would certainly contra uh, contradict the um, minimality of the perimeter right so we can't uh, so that observation is is correct another observation is that 
um, look at the left hand side here so we have a squared expression on the left hand side so a is squared and I claim that this must imply that b is squared as well and why would that be because if it is not then um, b must definitely share a common factor with b plus c and then uh, it, it definitely means that b and c share a common factor and uh, therefore a b and c must share this common factor because a squared is simply equal to um, to this right hand side expression so that is also the case here so therefore establishing b being a squared expression implies b plus c must also be a squared expression so b plus c is also a square squared expression here so as a result we can parameterize here so let's uh, come up with the following parameterization um, let me write that down here so I can simply call the left hand side uh, well let's start from the right hand side so let's call b as x square because I know it's a square and then I know b plus c is also a square let's call it y square it automatically creates a as x times y here and we are looking for the x y that will give us the minimal uh, result okay so now going back to our question we can apply um, law of cosine on the original triangle and observe that when you apply law of cosine you would get that b squared is simply equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2 times ac cosine b but we already know that uh, from the previous page that a squared is simply b times b plus c so we can go ahead and substitute it in this expression uh, and as a result so that would be equal to uh, we can call it b squared plus c squared obviously b squared plus bc i should say i'm sorry so therefore we get um, b squared plus bc plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b here and therefore you would observe that the b squares will simply cancel out and as a result this would imply that cosine angle b would simply be equal to uh, well b uh, we can factor out the c we would get b plus c all divided by um 2ac and obviously the c's will cancel out further so that would leave us with b plus c over 2a but let's let's consider uh, the value for angle b so going back to the previous page uh, i just re recall my drawing so angle b is the theta because i know angle c is obtuse angle here so this is angle c is greater than 90 degrees it must be the case that the sum of this implies the sum of a plus angle b is definitely less than 90 degrees but then in that case the, the sum of angle a plus b is simply 3 theta so this should imply that theta itself is less than 30 degrees so let's carry that result to the next page so that would imply that because angle theta is less than 30 degrees well angle theta meaning angle b here so therefore we already have a bound for cosine b cosine b is between cosine 0 and cosine 30 which is one uh, three halves and one so therefore this expression here so let's write that down would be simply uh, uh three root three over two which is cosine 30 less than b plus c over uh, 2a which is strictly less than 1 this is cosine 0 now we can go ahead and multiply all sides of this um, inequality by 2 so we would get the root 3 being um, sorry um, being strictly less than b plus c over a which is further less than 2 and recall now our parameterization here so b plus c is simply y squared a is simply uh, xy so after substituting that that would be equivalent to saying that the root 3 oops is strictly less than um, after you, you substitute them you would get y over 
x, which is less than 2. Now we know y and x are integers that should fall into this um, um, range. And also we want y and x to be minimal as well. So we mentioned that earlier. In that case, you start for different values of x. You test it. 1 is not possible. 2 won't be possible. Even 3 won't be possible because root 3 is roughly 1.7. Um, I guess so in that case even 3 won't do it because if you have 3 here obviously 4 would be 1.3 5 would be 1.66 6 not enough and then 6 over 3 you already have 2 so there's no number in this range so the smallest case that will work would be when x is actually equal to 4 so that would imply that x is actually 4 that's the smallest x possible and um, y is equal to, in that case, 7. So 7 over 4, 1.75 will fall roughly uh, between this, uh, this bound here, this range here. But when that's the case, we can immediately plug in these values for x and y to calculate the value of a, b, and c. And as a result, that implies that, for instance, a would be just x times y. So therefore, we can say a is equal to... 4 times 7, which is 28. In a similar way, b is simply equal to x squared, which is 16. And finally, c is equal to y squared, which is 49. The question was asking for the minimum possible perimeter. It would be the sum of these numbers here. So therefore, that perimeter is just 28 plus 16 plus 49. And that total equals 77. Sure enough, that's the minimal perimeter. And that solves our problem. Hope to see you in our next video.